Volvo Cars User Interface Census is ready to take the center stage in the groundbreaking Drive Me project that will put 100 self-driving Volvos on public roads around Gothenburg in 2017. The interface is designed to be intuitive and easy to use. While driving autonomously, the car turns lost commuting time into quality time by keeping the driver well informed, relaxed, and confident that the IntelliSafe autopilot is completely in control. Sections of the route available for autonomous driving are displayed when the journey is programmed into the navigation system. When entering the road approved for autonomous driving, the car signals that the autopilot is available. Lights on the steering wheel paddles start flashing. Once the two green bars in the center meet, the paddle lights shift to green and the autopilot confirms that the driving and the supervision is delegated to the car. The remaining driving time in autonomous mode is counted down in the center of the right dial, keeping you informed about how much free time you have left. Functions not available during active driving are now available to use. The autopilot monitors a complete 360 degree view of the surroundings and tells the driver about what's happening in the traffic environment such as a smooth overtaking of a slower vehicle. When autonomous driving is no longer available, the driver is requested to take back the control and continue the journey. A countdown is displayed. If the driver, for any reason, doesn't use the paddles to regain control, the car will bring itself to a safe stop. The self-driving Volvo will safely handle every aspect of the driving while you focus on something else. But anytime you want confirmation that IntelliSafe Autopilot is on top of its game, the information is always right there, right in front of you.
For a vehicle to drive itself, it needs to know where it is in the world, and it also needs to know what's around it. Based on these factors, it needs to be able to make smart and safe driving decisions in the real world. And once you get in the car, you start to get a real feel for the way the technology works and what it's like in real driving situations. So there are a few things that have to happen before the car can safely drive itself. First, it has to figure out its location in the world. So we use GPS, but GPS isn't always that accurate, which is why we rely on our other sensors, like the laser, which picks up on details in the environment that help us identify a more precise location. So think of the sensors as the car's eyes and ears, but with eyes that can see far off into the distance and 360 degrees around the car. And the great thing about having all these sensors is that they can talk to each other and get cross-checked information about the environment. So while we take in a ton of information using our sensors, it's our software that really processes all of this and differentiates between objects. All these objects are visible on the laptop that the safety drivers use while testing the vehicles. Based on what the vehicle senses and processes, these objects will be represented by different colored boxes. Cyclists will be red, pedestrians yellow, and the vehicles will appear as either green or pink. These boxes demonstrate the processing that takes place within the software. And think about the complexity here. People look different, cars have different shapes and sizes, yet despite these nuances, the software needs to classify these objects appropriately based on factors like their shape, movement pattern, or location. For example, if there's a cyclist in the bike lane, the vehicle understands that this is a cyclist, not another object like a car or a pedestrian, so the cyclist appears as a red box on the safety driver's laptop. And the software can also detect the cyclist's hand signal and yield to them appropriately. When our engineers think about where the car should drive and how, safety is always the top priority. So the vehicle takes into account many things, like how close it is to other objects or matching speed with traffic or anticipating other cars cutting in. For example, as a passenger, it can feel a little uncomfortable passing by a large vehicle on the road. Our engineers have taught the software to detect the large vehicles, and the laptop shows them as larger boxes on the screen. As our vehicle passes by a large truck, it will actually keep to the farther side of the lane and give ourselves a little bit more space. We've also taught the vehicle to recognize and navigate through construction zones. The vehicle sensors can spot the orange signs and cones early to alert the car of any lane blockage ahead, and then we can change lanes safely. Another thing that's really important is for the vehicle to drive in a naturalistic way, because when it's natural and the car abides by social norms on the road, it's also safer. For example, at four-way stops, people typically rely on eye contact to communicate whose turn it is. And in our case, the vehicle inches forward into the intersection to indicate its intent. So my role as a safety driver is first and foremost to keep the car, myself, and everyone around me safe. And in addition to keeping the car safe, I also provide detailed feedback to developers and let them know the car does anything that maybe I wouldn't have done personally. Maybe the car wasn't assertive enough in a lane change or wasn't fast enough at a green light. We provide the detailed feedback so they can fine tune the whole driving experience. By getting out there and driving in the real world, we're getting a better understanding of what exactly it's gonna take to improve the safety and comfort and ease of transportation. And that's really what our project's all about. Yeah.